Hello and welcome back to another look at VEX video. In this video, I want to show you how to create custom materials using the material containers and adding way more functionality to them. In the previous video, I showed you how to create custom compounds and we will be using those techniques for the custom materials as well. So if I create a standard surface again, you again get the material container and let's just name, the, name this dielectric material. Right. This, for example, would be a shader that would be used in the look dev department. They can create their own dielectric material, which has only a certain amount of parameters for the look dev artists to play with. So if I hop in here, by default, standard surface is connected. And now we can do a couple of cool things. We can, for instance, let's just start with the base color. Um, obviously, we do want to expose a couple of parameters for them, for the artist to control the base color or the dielectric albedos. So I do want to expose the base color. I do want to expose the diffuse roughness. And then we also want to deal with the specular. So in most cases, we want to deal with the specular roughness, probably the IOR. And now if I go back to the top level or just view it from here, you can see now these are my controls. I can do a customize UI. I can right click, create a new group, and let's let's call this dielectric base or whatever. So these are my basic values. And then I can, as before, I can shift click them, drag them in. And now I can also reorder if I need to. But now this would be a basic dielectric shader. It just has a couple of things exposed, like the base color, roughness for the spec, specular IR, and the roughness. In a very basic sense, this is all what, let's say, if you want to create a basic plastic shader, you can do it, do it like that. It's not very sophisticated. What you could do now, we can now, for instance, go to our previously created compound. If I open it here on the right, I can now use my texture loader. I can copy this, go into the electric and paste it in here. So now we have the flexibility to not just use a base color texture, but we can actually connect a texture to it. And, but, and then we can delete the base color um, port from the input and just hook up, let's say, the file name which will then allow the, the look dev artist to specify a texture instead of just a basic color. We probably want to define the color space uh, with from within. So now let's say we want to expose the saturation and maybe the multiply. And now we can hit one to collapse it. And if you don't care about the other um, ports, you can right click and just hide them so they are not really editable or connectable. So I can just hide them. They're still controllable on the UI, but they are not in the in the port section anymore. So now if I go back out again, you can now see we've got file name, saturation, and multiply enabled or exposed. And we can again create now a new port and may, maybe call this base color. And then we have these guys in here and we can move base color under diffuse roughness. Let's actually add diffuse roughness in here as well. And now we have a little more sophisticated dielectric material because now we can specify file names, play with roughness, saturation values, and all of that. And you can already see where I'm going with this. You can now create your metallic shader. I can hit Control D and we can now create a metallic shader um, or a subsurface scatter shader. And it's, it's a good way to isolate parameters that you, you know, you don't always want to deal with this whole stack of parameters because you will, most of the time, shaders are very specific and you don't want to deal with all of these things. Um, you can always dive in to actually access them, but the, on the, the top level, it's very straightforward and simple. And that is a good habit of working. Now, you can already see what I did here. I, cre I created this compounds material and then within, I have my different kind of um, texture loaders, uh, different compounds. So this would be a texture loader for RGB and a texture loader for float. And this was just an example. So we can actually get rid of these guys. So now if I open up my compounds, you can see it's actually nicely, neatly organized. Now that we have saved them in a USD file, we can quite easily just delete them, right? So we could now go into a different scene, a different look dev setup. Let's say we are working on our dinosaur. What we can do now is we can uh, create a stage from file 
and we can find our file that we just saved. So now I can load my compounds back in. And now I technically have a little bit of a library with different compounds. And now let us let me show you a Autodesk library which has compounds and materials. It's far from perfect. There are still things to make better in this library. So I just want to show you a nice guideline for the complexity that you can achieve. So stage from file. And now you can see we have an Autodesk material library. If I open it up, we get the very similar structure. I can right click show and look DevX, new tab. Uh, and this, for instance, is now a pretty sophisticated Uber shader. You can see it has uh, base color options, hue shifts, metalness. So a lot of things is exposed here. And if we dive in here, you can already see the complexity of a shading graph. Uh, lots of, obviously, lots of input noodles, lots of backdrops that show you the flow. You can see there is nested compounds, for instance, a base color, color correction. And within here, we've got color corrections, ranges, layers. So this is already a pretty nice way to control a standard surface shader. You've got masking down below. And on, again, on the top level here at the bottom, you see there's RGB masks if you want to supply them or ISO masks, different uh, names for those masks, texture inputs for breakup texture. So as I said, it can you can do a very sophisticated setup here. And then let's ha have a look in the tool section, which are the compounds. And now there's an uh, Autodesk color correct, show and look DevX new tab. And then color correction can dive in here. And this you, this node was used in the Uber shader as well um, to control that. And then there is displacements. And then we have a multi-level displacement where you can connect different layers to create a very detailed displacement uh, mask creator. So these are just examples of how you can achieve and create very sophisticated compounds and custom materials. I hope this gave you a good indication of what is capable and what you can do and achieve with compounds. And in the next video, I want to show you a working example, how we can use it with textures and make actually a nice little shading network.